So now that the baby imp sculptures were done, it was time to make some silicone box molds of them. First, I seal the sculptures with three light coats of Krylon Crystal Clear or matte spray and letting them dry in between coats. And while these are drying for a couple of hours, let me first define what a box mold is. A box mold is created by making a simple container around your part that you can then just fill up with silicone. It can be a plastic cup with the bottom cut off that you just glue around your part, or you can even just glue your part into the bottom of a cup like this. You could also cut four cardboard walls and glue them into a box shape around your part. Or you can even just simply bend and roll up a piece of cardboard and glue it over your part like this. All of these are examples of box molds, but I'm going to show you my favorite technique. Okay, so first I take a straight edge like this tongue depressor, hold it vertical, and move it out about 3 eighths of an inch away from the sculpture. I just eyeball this. Then I make a mark on the base on all four sides. Now I just connect the dots by making a dashed line all the way around and making sure it stays at least about 3 eighths of an inch away from the sculpture. Again, I just eyeball this. It doesn't have to be perfect. The dotted line should be 3 eighths of an inch out from the widest points of your sculpture, not from the base where it's tapered in. Next, hold a straight edge about a half inch above your part and look at this measurement. It's about two and three quarter inches for this sculpture and this will be the pore level for our silicone. Now it's time to make our foam core walls. I measure about seven and a half inches, which is over twice the height of the silicone volume and will allow for expansion when vacuuming it. After I mark the height of the walls, I trim off the extra with an X-Acto knife. Next, I make vertical slices about every half inch or so, being very careful not to cut all the way through. You only want to cut through the back layer of paper. Then I use the edge of the table to snap each of these cuts a little bit. And now you have an extremely flexible and versatile wall for your mold box that can easily bend around complex shapes. Next you want to measure and mark the walls with your pour level or fill volume that we measured earlier. These marks will let you know how much silicone you need to pour into your mold box. Then I trim off a section long enough to wrap around our sculpture, and I draw some arrows showing which way is up. Because if you accidentally glue these walls upside down, your fill lines will be in the wrong place. Now it's time to glue the walls to the base using a glue gun. Apply a small line of glue about two inches long just to the outside edge of the marks we made on the base and attach your wall to it. Make sure your wall stays to the outside edge of your marks and hold this in place until it sets. And then run a bead of glue around the outside edge as well. Now that you have one end of your wall anchored, you can easily work your way around the entire wall gluing it to the base. I then trim off any extra length of the wall and glue up the seam. Then I go all the way around the base again and up the slices a little with some hot glue and I really smear it in with a tongue depressor and make sure it's completely sealed up. You absolutely want to make sure you have no holes or gaps because the silicone will definitely leak out. And this is what it should look like. You can see our 3 8 inch distance between the sculpture and the wall. And here's the finished mold boxes. The last thing I do is trim off the corners of the bases so that they will fit into my vacuum chamber. And there you go, a perfect fit. For these molds, I'm gonna use Smooth-On's Mold Max 20, which is a tin-based silicone. 
You always want to shake up part B and stir up part A really well before using. This silicone has a pot life of 45 minutes and a cure time of 24 hours. Like most tin-based silicones, it is a 10 to 1 ratio. So first, I weigh out enough part A for the three molds. Part A is the silicone base. Remember to always keep your containers and workspace really clean. This will help to avoid cross-contamination of parts. Next, I weigh out part B, the catalyst, which will only be 10% of the weight of part A. Now pour part B into part A and use a tongue depressor to really scrape it all out. Then you are gonna stir the heck out of it for about three to five minutes, really scraping the sides, the bottom, and aggressively stirring until the two parts are perfectly blended together. Now you will fill up the mold boxes to the fill lines that we marked on the walls. I am going to vacuum the silicone, so I'm just dumping it in really fast. But if you're not going to vacuum it, I recommend pouring a very thin stream from about two feet above the mold into one spot at the bottom and then allowing it to slowly fill and this will help to eliminate trapped air bubbles. Once they are all filled, I place them into the vacuum chamber, make sure the lid is sealed, and then turn on the vacuum pump and open the valve. You will immediately see bubbles popping, and as the chamber starts to reach 29 inches of mercury, you will notice the volume of silicone rising and bubbling like it is boiling. This is why we made our walls so tall. Soon it will collapse down and just continue to bubble. I let it sit for about 3 minutes at 29 inches of mercury and continue to vacuum out the trapped air bubbles. Then after 3 minutes I turn it off and begin to slowly release the pressure inside the vacuum chamber. As the pressure releases you will notice the bubbles going away and the silicone will start to flatten out. And now you will have perfectly bubble-free, glassed out, flawless silicone molds. For the first hour or so while the silicone is still setting up, I check them often and spin them around to make sure there are no leaks. If there are, just plug them with clay. 24 hours later, it's time to open the molds. I first rip off the walls all the way around. Then I trim the extra silicone off the top and down the seam. Then I pop off the base. Next I start to pull away the sides and loosen the silicone from the sculpture. Then I grab the sides and push from the bottom with my thumb and they popped right out. And the sculpture was still in pretty decent shape. And here's the finished bubble-free mold. There's usually a couple small nuggets of clay to clean out, but the mold is absolutely flawless. So now I just open the other two molds. This is where using foam core for the walls really pays off. It peels off the silicone so easily. You can use cardboard like I mentioned, but the silicone likes to soak into the cardboard a bit and it's difficult to peel off. And here's the finished silicone box molds of the baby pumpkin imps. And coming soon in part three, we'll be showing you how we cast all of these heads using urethane and rigid foam. Thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you soon.